So, ich grüße euch ganz herzlich zu Extraterrestrial. Das habe ich jetzt schon oft sagen müssen, es ist immer ein Zungenbrecher, heute habe ich es mal richtig rausgebracht. Von einem Regie-Duo genannt The Vicious Brothers. In vier Jahren haben sie drei Filme seit ihrem Debüt Grave Encounters gedreht. Also ganz schön beachtlich, sie sind jetzt aus Amerika eingeflogen, erstmalig in Deutschland Bestimmt ein bisschen aufgeregt, aber Sie verstehen ja nicht, was ich sage. Also bitte, please give them a warm welcome, Stuart and Colin, the Vicious Brothers. What's up, everybody? Cool, well thank you for coming, this is fucking sweet, this theater is awesome, this is a great way to fucking see this movie, I'll tell you that much. Um, I don't know what to say, um, I don't know, we love your city, we love Germany, we just, this is our first time here, it's been a trip, hope you guys enjoy the film. Thank you so much. Before we go, we have a little present made uh, to the audience, uh, we have one DVD of Grave Encounters and you signed it for us and uh, you know the game. Uh, Sven has prepared a really specific question to get this. Um, so the question is, who wrote the script for Grave Encounters 2? Yeah. Very definite, clear answer. Very good. Okay. <laughs> and now, and now, we see us later here. Yeah. On Let's stage. chat after. Ask us questions. Right. Don't be scared. Please. Ask whatever. We, Even if you love it or hate it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Shit all over it. Whatever. <laughs> Just have fun with this one, because it is a lot of fun. Thank you. You know, in, in Germany we are always very curious about how things work in Hollywood, you know, because uh, a young filmmaker, film student, uh, it would be almost impossible for him to make a genre movie here, and uh, even for an older one it's really difficult. Uh, so, um, and you, in such a short time, you were already attached to some, some projects, so uh, how, did you, how did it start with Brave Encounters and what was afterwards? Sure, well actually, um, this film, Extraterrestrial, this was the first uh, script that we ever wrote together about eight years ago, I guess now. Um, we just, uh, we actually met on the internet, which is a little embarrassing, but we met on the internet and uh, we eventually met and we started talking about the idea of making a movie and uh, we just sat down and we, uh, we created the script just out of the love of watching The X-Files and we were huge horror nerds and sci-fi nerds, so we made this and then when we were done we realized there's no way in hell we can afford this. This is fucked. We're never gonna be able to make this thing. So then we went back to the drawing board and we did. We went through a couple of scripts that way that were just way too ambitious until finally we got to the point where we said we need to write a script that we can really make for no money at all. And that's kind of how Grave Encounters came to be. And um, we literally self-financed it. We just put some money into it and then we found just just by pure luck uh, one of our buddies. He, he, he was like, my dad might invest into that, so I think he gave us like 60 grand or something like that, and that's how Grave Encounters came together, because Grave Encounters, the budget is like $150,000. Good dad. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you said you two met in, in the internet, and can, yeah, and you, then you said you want to direct a movie together, and, and also then you, you want to stay together? I mean, The Vicious Brothers is really a brand now, or is that to become a, a, a brand? So how, how does it feel to, to direct as a... Because we have this really uh, a lot now, that there are two persons directing. I think it's so... or it could be difficult. What are the pros and cons of directing together and writing and editing? You know, I think we balance each other out a lot of the time. I mean, we, we both came from a self-taught background of making films. I picked up my first video camera when I was just a little kid. Same with Stu. We started recreating scenes from our favorite movies. And that's how we met on, on the internet. It was through a filmmaking forum where people would post their independent films or shooting on mini-DV cameras and high-8 and 
trying to get as, as filmic of images as possible at the time. And um, yeah, I mean, as far as collaborating goes, I think the process of making a film is, is, such, a, is such a collaborative process on so many levels that to share the writing and the directing is, is no different than having a cinematographer or a composer and each person, a production designer, each, each talent on set really brings their own voice. And although they're there to facilitate our vision, we're always open to, you know, suggestions that can... Once someone puts a suggestion out, it's no longer their idea. You know, like when we write together, there's no ego. So if, if, if he has an idea, that's my idea, you know? And if I have an idea that is different than that, we're both able to weigh which one ultimately we gravitate towards more. You, you really have to throw aside ego. And as far as production goes, when you're actually shooting a film, it's such a... I mean, on this film, for, for example, even though it's a much bigger budget than Grave Encounters, it's actually a $3 million movie, but it's trying to achieve a lot. You know, building the sets for, for the spaceship and all of the visual effects and the alien, it's computer generated, it's expensive. And, and without, without more money, you know, you're limited to a 12-hour day. And the movie's shot in 22 days, 12-hour days. So if there's any kind of confusion between the two of us on set, it'll totally fucking kill us from, from actually being able to make our day. So we need to work out all of our problems or our disagreements or any, any kind of things that are inconsistencies. We need to work that out while we're writing, while we're in the process of storyboarding the film. I was I was thinking maybe it's also helpful uh, when when the two of you are have already matching ideas uh, to to really f fight for your vision uh, against producers and everyone else. You know, uh, as maybe it's easier to be two to, to to have this vision really transferred. Yeah, well, I mean, because Grave Encounters kind of came out of nowhere, and we like like Stu said, we self financed it and made it for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It became quite a success all over the place, and I attribute that to you know kind of the marketing that we created for the film as well. We edited the trailer, and you know we did everything from a grassroots perspective on our own, and, and the trailer went viral, and as a result, it kind of spread throughout country to country without you know a big marketing budget from any of the distributors, and it still found a really substantial audience. And um, I think that allowed us a certain amount of freedom with our next film. So we, both films we were able to retain final cut of, but you know, we haven't had that take, that control taken away from us by a studio yet. Sometimes when a, when a company buys a film, they're yeah. yet, yeah. you know. Hey, it's interesting because we just had a French director here and he said in France they always have the final cut. It's really theirs, but it's in the US it's different. Well, like. um, half of the financing for this movie is American and half of it's Canadian. So, um, not having a U.S. distributor on board right away obviously helped us retain as much control as possible. One last question for me, because, uh, I mean, extraterrestrial... I mean, after Brave Encounters, I, I wouldn't think that you are so romantic, yeah? You know, <laughs> very romantic film, in a way. Uh, no, but for a question for the aliens. Uh, uh, you chose a very classic design for the aliens. Uh, I mean, it's a decision you, you, you made. Uh, so what, what was behind that, or what was your, what was, you know? I think, uh, like, first and foremost, me and Colin both definitely are believers. We believe in aliens, for sure. I mean, when we wrote this script, we were in Colin's mom's basement on Vancouver Island, which is in Canada, and we literally would just go down there, and we're smoking a lot of weed, and probably really paranoid as a result. But we were down there in the basement, and we'd get freaked out, thinking that aliens were going to come and get us. And we're, you know, we're, we're afraid, basically, all the time of being taken. Um, but, the, so it's, you know, we believe, and so, you know, I think that the reason we went with this sort of classical design is, I think if you ask anybody just on the street anywhere in the world, you know, what do you think an alien looks like if they actually exist, most people will say the same thing. Which is a you know skinny gray humanoid looking thing with big black eyes. That's kind of the accepted uh, idea of what an alien may actually look like. So I think by choosing to go with that design, um, I think it just makes it inherently more real and hopefully more scary. Any comments or questions from your side? Did you have to ask my judge for the last scene? <laughs> or the, for the last scene of the movie? 
have to ask my judge. My judge? Why? What? What am I? What are we missing? Mark Snow. I mean Mark Snow. Oh, Mark Snow. Oh, the composer, Mark Snow. Yeah, and and uh, the director of X Files because it's. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh. Um, no, we didn't. Uh, so far, we're good on that as far as any legal repercussions. But um, that's obviously, you know, that's obviously our homage and our love letter to the X Files. We're huge fans. Um, but uh, yeah. They don't, I don't know. We'll have to see. We're going to send um, a copy of the film to Chris Carter and uh, see what those guys think. So hopefully they dig it. I really like the end. Uh, at the, at the, as I thought, it, it, no, the end. No, no more Hollywood movies would end here. And it was going on and on and on. Uh, was there a different ending uh, planned as well? Or did you agree at the, uh, at the ending? Well, the... the there was a, a lot of different endings throughout the process of writing the film. I mean, it kind of turned into a bit of a romance in the in the later stages of the script, and obviously we, we couldn't end with a happy ending. That would have just been fucking awful. But, um, you, you know, Stu, Stu was always pushing, we need to just execute these two. The audience wants to see them die, let's just kill them. And... Uh, <laughs> And eventually I, I, you know, we had a version pretty close to, I think our money was starting to become a reality and the version of the film bordered on a very similar to kind of the way the first Resident Evil ends where it's kind of like she wakes up and is in an abandoned room and stumbles out and realizes that, you know, the kids have triggered a full-on war throughout the world and she kind of comes out and sees the whole street has just been taken over, essentially, and then it really tried to set up a sequel in just a very action movie style fashion, and, and you know, I, I, I'm glad that we went with the execution version, for sure. <laughs> well, how come they didn't seem, seem upset when the dog died? I don't think that they were like, oh yeah, there's somebody killing the dog, wasting time in the basement. <laughs> you don't like dogs. Right. She was pretty upset. She was pretty upset. You know, they had bigger problems that they had to worry about other than the dog. And, you know, she didn't have the dog for that long. She had only had the dog for like six months. So we don't know the backstory there. But, you know, she didn't like it. She didn't see that it died. He saw it. You know, she didn't like the dog. <laughs> Uh, our opinion of found footage films is kind of the same of any film. I mean, if it's well done and it's good and it works, it's, it's great regardless. I mean, I think it's a really cool um, and interesting format um, that you can do things with that you can't do with normal, uh, just cinematic narrative footage. Um, and, you know, if it's, like I said, if it's well done, it can be really cool. And it can have that, you remove that, that level of uh, like sort of the third wall and it can seem more real. Um, but as far as for extraterrestrial, maybe, I mean, it was the first script we wrote and we weren't thinking about, the, the, yeah, it was never meant to be a found footage film. We sort of added some little trinkets into it and there might have even been more in one version of the script and after we had done a Grave Encounters and its sequel, we were just like, fuck, we cannot do any more found footage. So just a little bit stayed in, yeah. but... Hier vorne gleich eine Frage. So what's next for you guys then? After this Q&A, I have to explain something. Yes, you may. Um, what's, what is next? Uh, it's a, that's a very hard question. We have three projects that could come together. We, we're attached to a a slasher film that's actually written by a couple other writers and it's a really gory, intense film that too takes place in... I, I shouldn't spoil that actually. It's, it, it, it also takes place in a mental institution but it's a lot different and it's, it's an exciting script so we're attached to that. We'll see if that, what that means is that essentially the producers sought Stu and I out based on this film. They actually saw it at the Tribeca Film Festival and really enjoyed it. And um, so they're trying to finalize the money for that film right now. And then we also have a treatment for Grave Encounters 3 that we want to come back and direct. 
We have a really great idea that kind of brings, wraps everything up in a way that we think would satisfy mostly ourselves and, and the audience as well. I mean, with the sequel, we were very rushed, and in some ways, we really liked the film, but in other ways, you know, it, it was a compromise due to time. We only had four months to shoot and then deliver the film. So it was, and also we didn't direct it. We just were behind kind of the writing and some of the editing. So we, we want to come back to that and, and close that off. And then we also have a, like, I, like Stu said, we've written two other scripts before we finally made Grave Encounters. And we're actually finishing another script right now that's a survival horror film that takes place in the desert. And we really want to try to, if Grave Encounters 3 doesn't come together in the next two or three months, then that will probably be our next project. We'll just dive fully into that and shoot independently as well. <laughs> it was real. Like in the film, was the weed went real? I think Ironside was like, wow, I haven't smoked one of these in a while. And then he sparked it up. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, you have uh, some names attached. Uh, uh, like Michael Ironside and Gil Bellows. Uh, well, how did you get that? Right. Um, well, with Gil Bellows, uh, obviously, The Shawshank Redemption is one of my favorite films. So we were super excited to get the chance to work with him. And he's done a lot of great stuff since then, obviously. But um, it was just through a connection that our producer, Randy Manis, who is a producer on movies like Lawless, and um, recently he, he did a movie with Gil Bellows and Susan Sarandon called The Calling. And I was kind of just looking for people that were in, in that vein and, and, and came across him on, on, his, on the IMDb credit list to one of Randy's films, and I figured, you know, maybe he could approach him and ask on behalf of he if he'd take a Skype call with us. And Gil is like the straight up coolest motherfucker ever. So he did the call with us and was like, I like you guys, I'm in. And um, so that's how he came on board the project. And Ironside was really just a shot in the dark. I, I was to Stu, I was like, what about Michael Ironside? He'd be fucking great as a conspiracy theorist. And we had our casting director in Canada just kind of fire off a blanket email to his agent. And Ironside said to us that it was between playing a conspiracy theorist with us or playing like a detective in Boston or something. And, and he was like, obviously, I wanted to play the fucking conspiracy theorist. So, so that's, why, that's how we got him. And Ironside we only shot with actually for three days. So... When we were working with him, it was very rigorous. We were shooting every scene, block shooting his scenes, just because that's kind of what you do with a smaller budget film. When a bigger actor comes on board, you're, you know, you can only afford him for so many days, so you have to schedule accordingly and kind of shoot around, shoot everything that he's involved with. Okay, um, I think uh, we would be happy to see you outside. Maybe you sign something or just there for a little talk. And thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you for having us.